Thank you so much, Robert. Um, I'm going to start off with my son. I have, a, I have a son of three years old, almost four. I ha I'm not allowed to say three, he's four years old almost. And this is the, uh, the, the age that you can, these, these, these little boys recognize uh, cars. Yeah, I've got uh, several old timers and he recognizes all kinds of cars. And he doesn't quite well understand the difference between, yeah, he does understand the difference between internal combustion engines and electric cars, but it does, doesn't uh, get a sense of what an electric car is. So he doesn't say electric car, he said, Daddy, Daddy, here, there's a relaxed car instead of electric. And what we've seen today is that indeed the convenience of the electric cars is, tends to be higher than these, these normal cars, if and only if the charging infrastructure is, uh, and that you saw in the, in the example of Norway, um, is uh, convenient as well. And that's what my presentation is about, the inconvenience of charging infrastructure. Um, there was this moment I was preparing this presentation and I get a tweet about how kwetsbaar is onze laat infrastructuur. Um, and then I uh, was, was preparing this presentation, Sunday to bed, it was uh, 8 o'clock. Um, and I thought, okay, well, how am I, I going to explain this, this kind of this vulnerability effect? How am I going to explain to you what's, what's the vulnerability of a system and, and all these, these, these cascading failures? And um, uh, a cascading failure is a failure of one part of the system and then uh, somehow due to this failure in the first part of the system, the, the second part of the system tends to fail as well and thereafter a, a new part, a new part. Um, and, and somehow, somehow I got a little help from my friend, from, from, from well, from the NS. Um, because at the same moment that I entered this, this tweet, um, the, exactly the same moment, and I, I'm not a, the, the causer of this, uh, this, uh, this, this burden, um, but we had this uh, strong storing in the city of Amsterdam. And this was the first failure in the cascades of the of following up uh, elements in the network, because whom of you had a, a problem not with the, the electricity itself, but with the traffic? Yeah, almost all of you. Hartstikke goed. Um, so you all know what a cascading failure is. Um, so I don't have to explain it to you. The NS did it. Um, and cascading failures occur in this charging infrastructure as well. Um, let me first, in brief, tell you about what happened last year. Two dominant strategies of charging infrastructure rollout were applied last year for rolling out charging infrastructure. On one hand, we had this, this, this demand-driven charging infrastructure rollout. So someone applies for a, for a charging point after buying or leasing an electric car, and the municipality plays charging infrastructure. On the other hand, ELA did a great job on this as well. Um, we had this strategic rollout uh, near groceries and near, nearby museum or shopping malls, we put a charging station, and, and thereafter we expect some kind of, uh, of charging demand, charging load at a certain location. And this is why we are front runner in the, as in the Netherlands. All kinds of charging stations everywhere in the Netherlands. Um, and in this presentation I'm going to plead for a third type of rollout. Because you can ask yourself the question, is this robust? Is this a robust system strategy for, for rolling out charging infrastructure? Um, and as you may have seen in, in this, these previous presentations, um, there are kind of modalities. Eh? We've got the taxis, they have a turn charging demand, we've got the free floating charging uh, car sharing schemes, we have a specific type of demand as well. Um, and from there, you get all kinds of behavior at a certain charging point, and you can ask yourself what happens if a charging point fails? And what kind of modalities are affected, and what kind of uses are affected in case of failure? Um, so, what we did is uh, we applied kind of yeah, theory, network theory to those, those uh, charging infrastructure and look at what if the charging infrastructure itself is a network from users and charging points um, and can we determine its vulnerability? Can we determine where and when charging infrastructure is vulnerable? So what we did is, uh, is the following and uh, everyone knows this, uh, um, uh, this is, if this is a charging station, this is the, your charging station, your most preferred charging station, um, then you can imagine that 
Um, if this charging station is occupied, then there are several relevant alternatives to your charging station. Yeah, for example, this one is nearby, and this one is also nearby, and this is less nearby, so you have to walk for a certain uh, amount of, uh, of time or a certain distance. Um, and how many of you have ever had the situation that your most favorite charging point was occupied? Can I, can you, can I see hands? One, two, three, four, ten? At least ten of you. So in that case you have to go to this next to uh, preferred charging point and uh, hopefully it's not occupied. And particularly in these, these, these dense areas, in these, uh, the G4 cities, you see this parking pressure, as, uh, as Rick mentioned as well, and you see next to this parking pressure those long-term parking uh, EV users. So these occurrences of having uh, vulnerability and having occupied star charging station, well, they might increase as well in the system. So what we did is we applied this network idea. So what you here see is all the network of charging infrastructure in the city of Amsterdam. Um, bounded by the relevant alternatives. So what you see, for example, is here, this is a charging station and it has two relevant alternatives in case of failure uh, within walking distance set to a limit of 500 meters. And what you of course then see is here in the city center, it's almost green because of the edges and in the outskirts of the city, yeah, you see a lot of uh, lone wolves as charging stations. Um, and what we then did is, um, is the following. We made a simulation model. And we made a simulation model in which we removed a single charging station, one charging station at a time, and looked at the way users will divert their route and go to a new charging station and look at the consequences. So the first question is, is there any relevant alternative to my charging station? And um, if not, then we got a complete failure. Well, the, for the user. Because it cannot charge. Um, if there's an alternative, that's the question, then the question is, does this session, my arrival time, fit into the open spot of the next to preferred charging station? So you walk for a distance and you find out that or you drive for a distance to the next to a preferred charging station and you find out that it's not occupied and you plug in and it ends. But then the question is, is there an alternative for the whole session? So if not, then you get a cascading failure because, because you as a user go to another charging point, the next user that normally would arrive at your charging station uh, cannot charge because it's occupied. So what you then get is a cascading failure. Yeah, you, get, you get back to the first situation. So someone else is bothered by the fact that you were bothered by a malfunctioning or occupied charging station. Um, and if somehow, in the end, if you go iterate through this, uh, this simulation, again, someone at the end of the cycle is unable to charge his car, then you get again a complete failure of the system. So we simulated this for all the sessions in the G4 cities, and I'm going to show you the city of Amsterdam. Um, and they defined the two types of, uh, of vulnerability. First, there's the complete failure. It's a kind of service vulnerability. You cannot deliver servers. And the second one is the inconvenience. So you have to walk to a new charging station. And how many people are affected by the fact that there is one charging station occupied? or malfunctioning. So, this is it. What, we, what do we see here? Now, the outskirts here and there, indeed, um, as a fraction of all the sessions, between 0% and 100%, is, uh, for all sessions in the, in the last year, is indeed um, unable to charge. So all these outskirts have uh, a service failure. Um, and what you see here, indeed in the outskirts, and in the middle, you see that all the sessions at least could be somehow be uh, diverted. Then, if we look at the inconvenience here on the other side, you see here, between 0 and 10 users that are um, moved, diverted to a new 
uh, charging station. So here at this spot, if this charging station fails, approximately 10 other users need to be diverted um, by one failed charging station. And this is vulnerability. So um, this is just the map of, of the city of Amsterdam. And um, that's why we plead for this new type of rollout. So what are the um, properties of effective um, networks? And how can we apply effective network theory to charging infrastructure? Yes, we can. Of course. Um, so the first thing, let's go back to this uh, server failure. What you can do, of course, is connect the dots. And for example, this is a part of Amsterdam. And what you see, if this is a walking distance, the, the, blue, the blue dots. Um, indeed, you could have asked, did my son make this? No, I didn't make this myself. Um, these are locations in the city where indeed we found vulnerable charging points. And if you connect these sub-networks here to different sub-networks by placing relevant alternatives, not by demand, not by strategy, but simply by, uh, as, a, as an idea of developing a network, then you can indeed, in case of failure of these charging stations, uh, divert to a new charging station available for your sessions. So by connecting the sub-networks, you're able to uh, avoid this service failure. Okay, connect the dots. Keep that in mind. Um, the second one is if you, and this is uh, the blue, um, this is a shot from the, the uh, I'm sorry, let The blue ones are occupied on both sides. So if, if you arrive here, at this, this point, you have a problem. Because these are occupied, and this is the only relevant alternative that has two spots uh, left, and these all have one spot left. So what you can then do for having this um, uh, inconvenience vulnerability is strengthen the nodes, placing, for example, charging hubs next to each other. Here, a, a hub of more than one, uh, than one charging station. Why? Now, because if you do so, then the physical cascade length, so going from one uh, station to the other station, decreases dramatically. Um, and on the other hand, the chance of having a, an, an, a charging station at a location with a hub that's uh, malfunctioning or occupied is less. So um, in the end, you can, by doing the, the, the reinforcement of the network, be able to um, get out of these this vulnerability issues. Um, that leads me uh, to this, uh, this idea of having this uh, third type of rollout instead of demand-driven and strategic, having the network-driven rollout strategy in for, uh, uh, to avoid the vulnerability. Questions?